Hi everyone! Today I want to show you a couple more examples of some bar models. And remember, bar models are a great way to use a visual to help make sure you understand what the question is asking you to solve. And these are especially helpful when we're dividing and comparing two groups in a division problem. So let's take a look at the first example. It says Ricardo's dog weighs six times as much as his cat. The total weight of the two pets is 98 pounds. How much does Ricardo's dog weigh? So right now I'm just getting a picture of a dog and a cat sitting next to each other, maybe on the couch. That's my dog's favorite spot to hang out. And I can tell that the dog is much larger than the cat. All right, so now I've got that mental picture, that mental movie. Let's go line by line and see where the important math information is. So the first sentence says, Ricardo's dog weighs six times as much as his cat. This is a big clue to me that I don't know how much the dog weighs, but I also don't know how much the cat weighs. So I'm going to write down that his dog and his cat are both unknown to me. Now I can also tell from this sentence that the dog weighs six times as much as the cat. Well, that tells me that I'm going to say that the cat is going to get one box full of a mystery number. I don't know how much the cat weighs, but I know that the cat weighs less, so I'm going to represent the cat by one box. And the dog weighs six times as much. Well, if the cat is one group of a mystery number, then six times as much would be six groups of a mystery number. So I'm going to draw a long rectangle that has six groups of a mystery number. Okay, that's a lot of information just from the first sentence. So let's move on to the second sentence and see what else I get to help me solve the problem. Then it says the total weight of his two pets is 98 pounds. So I know that both of these animals together weigh 98 pounds. Finally, it asks, how much does Ricardo's dog weigh? And it's important to pay attention, especially with a multiple choice question, that I want to know the weight of the dog. So I might put a little star next to that just to remind me to answer the question based on the weight of the dog. So now I have this picture that can help me solve the problem. So I know that these 98 pounds are shared between the dog and the cat. So I can take that 98 and I can divide it by all of the groups I see here. That means I'm dividing it into not just six groups shown for the dog, but seven total groups because I also have this one group for the cat. Seven can fit into nine one time. One group of seven is seven. Subtract, I'm left with two. Bring down the eight. I can make four groups of seven out of 28. That is exactly 28 items, and I'm left with zero. So that means my mystery number equals 14 pounds. So the cat is 14 pounds. Now if you look, that's one of the distractor answers. We have to remember that I want the weight of the dog. So now I need to take those 14 pounds and multiply by six. Six times four is 24. Six times one is six plus two is eight. That tells me that Ricardo's dog weighs 84 pounds, which is one of my answer choices right here. Let's take a look at another example. This one says, the number of children at the library was three times the number of adults. The total number of people at the library was 48. How many children were at the library? So again, let's go line by line. I can picture all these people at the library. So this says the total number of children at the library was three times the number of adults. Again, I see a comparison there. I don't know how many kids there were. I don't know how many adults there were, but I do know that there were three times as many kids as adults. So I'm gonna make a group for the kids and a group for the adults. Since there were fewer adults, that gets one group of a mystery number. And there were three times as many kids, so that's going to get three groups of a mystery number. Now I have my bar model set up. 
The second sentence says the total number of people at the library was 48. So that means all together, kids and adults, there were 48 people at the library. How many children were at the library? Again, it's important to pay attention that I'm looking for the children, not just the adults. So that means I can take this 48 people and divide it between the four groups, three groups of kids and one group of adults. I know 48 divided by four is 12. That's a basic fact. So that means my mystery number is 12 adults. But again, I want to know the number of children, so I need to do 12 times 3, or 36 kids. And that is one of our answer choices. There were 36 children at the library. Let's look at one more example together. This one says, Sarah babysat seven times as many hours during summer break as she did during spring break. Sarah babysat a total of 56 hours during both breaks. How many hours did Sarah babysit during spring break? Now I can totally relate to this story problem because I did a lot of babysitting in high school. So I can make, it makes sense to me that she would babysit more over the summer as she did over spring break because summer's a lot longer. So first, I'm gonna underline the first sentence. Sarah babysat seven times as many hours as she, during summer break as she did during spring break. That, I see that comparison phrase in there again. I don't know the spring break, I don't know the summer break, but I do know that summer break was seven times as much. So I have a summer break and I have a spring break. Since spring break was fewer hours, I'm gonna give that the mystery number. And summer break was seven times as much. So that will get a long rectangle made up of seven groups. Then sentence two reads, she babysat a total of 56 hours during both breaks. So that means between summer break and spring break, she babysat for 56 hours. How many hours did Sarah babysit? during spring break. So I need to pay attention that I'm looking for spring break this time, which is just one box. So now to figure out the mystery number in each box, I can take 56 and I can divide it by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight groups. 56 divided by eight is a basic fact. So that's seven hours for each mystery number. And since I'm only looking for spring break, I don't have to do any more work. I'm done. I have my answer of seven hours during spring break. So that's a couple more examples of how to use a bar model. These are great visuals for those of you who like a visual. We'll do lots more of these this year. Thank you for watching. I hope this video helped.